there. Hope that it works because that one's had issues before, but we're just going to call it and hope that it works. There we go. All righty. Uh, where are we? We are we on the right camera. I think we're on the right camera. Close enough. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment, first live daily photography show on YouTube. How you guys doing? Hope y'all are doing well. I'm back from Florida. It is much colder here. There's snow on the ground, which uh, fortunately not so much that I couldn't get in last night, but I left a balmy 73 degrees and raining to come to sub-zero Celsius, you know, sub-freezing and snowy, which frankly is what it should be in February. So good morning, everybody. We got uh, we got Travis in there. We got Jess. Good morning. Uh, these do look pretty cool, right? And um, hello, the Burns Tech and hello, Mark. Lots of familiar faces. I love that there's so many of the same folks coming in for the daily shows. This is really, really cool. This is fun. I, I dig it. I dig it. So today, what I wanted to talk about, we're going to take a little break from the GH5 discussion because it's been kind of GH5 overload lately and talk about something else that applies to um, I, I guess all mo many photographers, I don't really know how extensive this goes when I'm about to show you, but I know that this works with micro four thirds, which obviously is what I'm shooting with. And, um, but, but I kind of think you can use these on a lot of different cameras, but let's take a look at what we've got. Royal Grom, welcome. Good morning. So this, the today's topic is about vintage lenses. And let's take a quick little close up here. Um, there we go at these little, little buttes right here. And I'm going to, I'm going to, Tilt them on their side in a moment so you can see exactly what these are. But just to give you an idea of the size of these things, this is like super tiny, right? Teeny, tiny, tiny little lens. So here's the thing. I I had heard over time and not really explored it, um, but that there were, there were older lenses that you could get for various cameras. You could adapt them to fit or that were working on cameras natively like micro four thirds and so on. And I never really looked into it that much. But it's one of those things, one of those topics you just hear about every once in a while. And... Um, and at some point, I think I created an eBay search. And you can go on eBay and you can like search for something and then say, bookmark this search or whatever. So it alerts you every time something new shows up in there. And um, and I was, I, I think I did a keyword like vintage lens, micro four thirds, something like that. I really wasn't finding much of anything. Maybe one thing came up and it wasn't really vintage. It was like, you know, used from 20, 2005, 2010. That, that's not exactly vintage. People using keywords incorrectly. And uh, good morning, Jesse, and welcome. I'm glad that uh, glad you're new on the channel. Thanks for watching. And somewhere in the digging through, I started to find lenses that weren't micro four thirds, but they were tagged. And I'm going, oh, I don't really understand what's going on here. And then I realized, and something a lot of you probably already know, that there was an old screw mount, and that old screw mount can be adapted to just about anything. There were cameras that were made for this with the screw mount, but now these lenses can be used on all kinds of different things. Now, a lens that's this small can't be put onto a full frame camera. This is These are tiny little guys, but these are tiny little vintage Russian lenses. I don't know why all this cool vintage glass comes out of Russia, but it does. And uh, with the screw mount on it. So now you got to adapt this thing to your micro four thirds. So let's start with that part of it. I've got pulled up here on my Amazon page. Um, this is... The and there's lots of these adapters. I just searched Amazon, found this one. It was 10 bucks, had great reviews, perfect. It is a um, Leica 39 millimeter screw lens to micro four thirds. That's kind of the key. So the Leica screw mount, 39 millimeter screw mount, that's what these were, I guess, designed for. Um, I don't know, I don't really know the history. I should at some point look this up. I'm sure it's a fascinating history, but somewhere along the line, companies started making these lenses these for the screw mount that I guess were primarily for Leica, since that's what it's called there. And uh, so I got one of these adapters and 10 bucks for the adapter and bought a couple lenses on eBay. And I have another one coming that hasn't arrived yet. And I decided I'm just going to do this show. I'm not going to, I'm not going to wait for the next one to come, but these are, are funky, cool old lenses with a, a natural look to them that is not going to be super clean. It might be a little soft around the edges. Um, heck, some of the glass might be scratched up. Who the hell knows? And it's just a whole different fun approach, clearly all manual, whole different fun approach, whole different fun thing to put onto your camera. So I'm gonna put that on to this camera in a moment. We're gonna look at a color chart and see if we can see the color shifts. I haven't even done this yet, so I have no idea if we're gonna see anything, but I think it's kind of fun to check out. Quick little scroll through the comments here, lots of them flying by, which is always awesome. Um, uh, Trevor Pen Penocky, Penocky, I gotta make this bigger. God, going blind. Trevor says, tons and tons and tons of glass. I'm up about 15 or so vintage lenses. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, well, Trevor, then in the comments, let me know where you're getting them, if there's anything other than eBay that people should be looking for, um, and any tips you've got that you want to share with people. Uh, and in fact, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and post that here, but then copy that, and once this goes live as a pre-recorded show, uh, unfortunately, the whole live chat disappears. It's a stupid YouTube thing. Um, but take your your 
your whatever you share and stick it into the comments later because I know a lot of people are going to be really excited to see that. Um, all right, and uh, Russia, uh, Christopher Pepe says, Russia got a Leica factory after World War II for reparations. No kidding. Oh, that's cool. Look at that, it's a history lesson. Wow, from Russia with love, that it is. <laughs> and uh, and Craig is saying you're so excited to jump into the world of Micro Four Thirds. Well, this is one of the cool benefits, I think, of this world is you've got all kinds of cool stuff like this, all kinds of cool old glass. So let's take a close look at the front of some of these because this is really fun. Let me start with, um, I'll start with this one, the first one that came. So let's see here, I gotta read it. Well, obviously I can't really read it, but it's a 50 millimeter F3.5. And you see that right on the top there, 50 F3.5. And you can see this is this is a pretty good size lens. I mean, relatively speaking to the little guys, this is huge. Um, F35. It's got a a the the aperture ring. Can you see? Can you see through that? That's not even the aperture ring, is it? One of the oh, there we go. Because there's a focus ring. This is crazy. Okay, this is the focus ring. The aperture one is like you got to kind of hold onto the focus and twist that separately. So you're probably not going to be doing too much opening and closing of that. But if I go wide open, you can see on there. I'm trying not to get a glare on there. Hopefully, you can see that it says three five to f16 and if we look through it now that'll be a trick let's see can we do this there we go yeah okay there we go you can see that closing down it's a very round shaped well quite round shaped let's see one two three four five six leaf it looks like aperture quite round but it's stepless which is really nice you don't have any um any solid steps you can go to any aperture any fraction of an aperture in between so that's kind of cool and then look at this one Let's see here. Let's do this one next. Now, these two are basically the same, but I guess different generations. I'm not really sure. Let's say something in Russian. If anybody speaks Russian out there, you got to translate that for me. I'd love to know what that says. And this one is a 50 millimeter of 3.5. Now, what I haven't figured out yet is, are we talking like with Micro Four Thirds, what it says in the lens, you double? Is this actually 100 millimeter? This can't be a 100 millimeter lens. I'm kind of thinking it's a 50 mil equivalent or it has absolutely nothing to do with any ratio that we're familiar with. And that's going to be a complete new mystery thing for me too. But here's something I just, I love this. Check this one out. This one showed up. I opened this this morning. This came while I was gone. Notice this one. This focus is not great, is it? Where's my focus button? Let's see if we can get this to lock a little bit better on here. I have no idea if that's changing at all. Well, hopefully that's focused enough for you guys. There we go, that's sharper. Okay, that's better. Notice this one, it says five centimeters. I'm thinking five centimeters. Oh wait, of course, five centimeters is 50 millimeters. <laughs> so this one's got centimeters printed on it. How cool is that? Okay, so then I got this little, the little adapter that I showed you and this thing just screws on. So you could have one of these, leave it on your camera and just take the lenses on and off. Or given that these are only 10 bucks, you could buy several of these and then just leave them on your lens and then you can swap lenses out like normally. Now, one of the things about this particular lens, the one that I brought up, let's see, pull it up again. Um, this one was on eBay, uh, I mean on uh, Amazon. It says in the, in the comments that one of the problems with this one is that when you screw the lens on, its stopping point puts everything upside down. So your aperture, You'd have to look at the bottom of the lens, the camera, to see the settings. Um, but that you can take this apart with a couple of really small screws, rotate it 180 degrees, and put it back together, and it's fine. I don't know that I'll bother doing that, because once it's on there, I'm not looking at the lens barrel. I don't really care what it says. I'm just going to make sure it's wide open, and then obviously grab the focus ring to focus. And you know. But that's up to you. That's one of those things that it says on there. Um, so let's try these out. Let's try these guys out. Let's go. Let's go back to this screen here. And let's see real quick, other comments in there. Um, Mush is asking, would this work on the Canon 80D? See, these lenses, I can't imagine they would because they're so small that the, the 80D is an um, APS-C sensor, I believe. And the sensor is probably too big. You'd end up with a huge vignette around it if you could modify it to it. But I don't really know because this is, again, this is a whole new world to me. But I do believe that there are lenses like this that are bigger ones designed for the bigger sensor, well, designed for bigger film cameras. Um, but you know, that said, hold on a second. That's interesting because if these are designed for Leica, Leica was shooting 35 millimeter film. It wasn't shooting small film. So maybe, maybe you can. Um, whoever the chap was, I'm sorry, I forgot your name now, who said um, that you've got a bunch of these. Oh, there we go, Trevor. Trevor's saying you've got tons and tons of these 15 vintage lenses. Let me know, you put a comment in here. Can you get these for, can these work on full frame or uh, APS-C size sensors? Uh, oh, look, he's already said that. God, look at that, you hit me. Mush, it will work on any camera where you can achieve the proper flange to sensor distance. And I would assume that just means having a, um, 
the adapter like the one that I just showed you and getting the right one. Videographers like these because of the way you can ride the aperture to manage exposure. Yeah, that is one of the great things about the non-stepped aperture. Now that said, I, um, this one feels like it's about to fall apart. Well, um, that said, when, when I'm doing video, I prefer to not ride the aperture, uh, but to put a variable ND on. So I'm just increase your, 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 your increasing or decreasing the amount of light coming through the lens through the ND filter. That way I'm not changing aperture, which of course would change depth of field and obviously don't want to change shutter speed or ISO while you're shooting video. So, so there's that. So, okay, let's, let's try this out. Let me see how am I going to do this. Um, first of all, let's see, this is working. Okay. We got this on there. I don't need light on this thing. I should have set this up a little different, but it is what it is. Okay. Let's go to this view. All right. So this is the, this is my GX85 Panasonic. I guess we're just going to do it like this. That's my GX85 Panasonic, and this is the Leica 15mm lens on here. So that's what the colors look like. Let me open this up a little bit flatter. So maybe I can. No, maybe I can't. Still stand it up? Yeah, that works. Ooh, I'm not getting a glare. I need to not have a glare. I guess it's going to be a little bit in the dark. Okay. So let's do this. I'm going to take a picture of that. It's still kind of glary. That's better. Still glary, isn't it? Weird. Oh, well, we're just going to try it. Oh, no memory card. Excellent. Hey, Ryan, bring me a memory card, please. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. I've got one here. We can use this one. Hold on. Just stick this in here. I have no idea what was on this card, but who cares? It's only four gigabyte. Who has four gig cards laying around? Bizarre thing to have sitting here. All right, let me hit play and see what... Oh, just got to unplug it to play. See what's on here before I erase, like, you know, some crazy important photo. Play. This has... This has photos that I've done exactly this sort of thing for it. For Okay, let me do a quick format on there. Yes, and do, 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 format, format, format. Okay, okay, here we go. All right, let's plug this guy back in. And wake up, see the HDMI. So this is getting routed through my decimator um, scaler so that it converts to the signal that you guys are seeing. And here we go, now we're good. All right, let's go back to this view and take a picture of this. All right. I am I'm t really not happy with that glare on there. It's just looking awful. There's got to be a better way to do this. Oh, well, forget it. Okay, so there's that. If I hit play, I think it'll come up on here. Um, come up, come up, come up, come up. We're going to go back to this while I wait for that to come up. Oh, it did come up there. Look at that. Just as I switched. Okay, so there's what that one looks like. Uh, the, the shading that you're seeing is because it was shot with a 4.3 image, but through a 69 by 9 um, link through the HDMI. So that's why you're seeing that kind of weird cropping in there. Don't worry about it. Okay, so that's what that one looks like. All right, so now let's go back to, well, let's go to one of these other lenses. I'm really anxious to see what the difference is. Let's put this one on. So this is the, the first one I got. This was the 50 millimeter F3.5. Interesting that these are 53.5s as well, and they're a quarter, third of the size, half the size. Fascinating. Okay. All right. Let's see what I can get here. Um, let's see if I'm wide open. Fascinating stuff, you know? Come on. There we go. Wide open. <laughs> it takes two hands to get that one going. And... Hmm. I seem to be having trouble focusing this. Let's see here. That's not focusing at all. See, look. This is what I'm getting right now. Ah, wrong button. Come back here. Come here. That's an old show. There we go. Huh. I am not... Can I focus on something else farther away? Now, this one lens I had put on here before, and I know it focused. Well, that's just no bueno. What am I doing wrong? A sneaky feeling I'm doing something really, really stupid. Uh, yes, large side is a 15 millimeter, not 3.5. Uh, wait, you're talking about... Now, the Leica, this one, is a 15 millimeter f1.7. This is one of my favorite lenses. Love, love, love this lens. Okay, wide open. Wide open. There's focus. Nothing else moves that's not supposed to move. I'm not even sure which is the closest focus point. See, this is where I got to look at it upside down or something. Huh. Well, that's kind of weird because that's not good. Make sure that's on there tight. All right, we're going to try a different lens. I don't know why I'm not getting this one to work, but it's funny because this is the one that I had already attached and it did work. Oh, well, let's try something else. So as you can clearly see, vintage lenses are awesome. I'm looking for the red dot. There's no red dot, dummy. Get that on there, spin that in. 
There we go. Okay, and make sure we're wide open. I think it's wide open. Yeah, that's wide open. Okay. Now see if I can get this one to focus. All right. What am I doing wrong? How is this possible that I can't even get it to focus? Because this is just bizarre. It won't focus. It's changing focus. All right, who, uh, Trevor, you've done this before. Pretty sure the lenses have are into star lenses. Yeah, I think that's what, sh what it said on eBay. What am I doing wrong, Trevor, since clearly I'm being a complete Muppet about this. Why? Well, this is a crappy demo. <laughs> Here, I expected this to be really cool and fun, but I'm not getting... I can't get anything to focus. Let me just take this off. I can't possibly have anything to do with it, but let's just see what happens here. We stop down the aperture a bit, see if that makes any difference. Well, stopping down the aperture, I'm definitely getting more depth of field, but I'm still... The, the amount of focus change is just so minimal. It's not like super close focusing. I can't seem to focus on anything even across the room. All right, guys. Well, this is now officially the world's crappiest photo moment because I can't get anything to work. Uh, Trevor, save me, buddy. Let's see here. Uh, Larks is asking, what is better to buy, 25.17 or 15.17? Prices are kind of the same, but the focal length. Well, it's the focal length, man. What do you want? Do you want a 50 millimeter lens or a 30, um, 30 millimeter lens? For street photography, I love, love, love the 15. It's a really great lens. And it is a sharper lens. The Leica 15 f1.7 is a sharper lens than the Leica 25 one seven, I guess it is, right? Um, that's an older lens. That one really needs to be upgraded. It's a little soft around the edges, to be honest. <sighs> All right, well, I'm kind of super bummed and disappointed. Trevor says, there should definitely be a focusing scale on there, set it to the closest distance and pan around, you'd hit something in focus. Yeah, there is a focusing scale, but look at this. This is kind of interesting. Let's go to the close-up view here. Um, it's, let's see here, can I get that? Yeah, you can sort of see that little bit of a glare in there. It's like it's not aligned because the the center dot, okay, at F3.5, that's the center dot. It's weird. There's there's infinity. It's so weird. Like none of the lines line up. I'm super confused by what's happening here. Super confused by this. Uh, must be the adapter that it's at fault. Check the adapter connection. Well, I don't know what else to do other than Tighten it, right? Is there anything else to do to it? You just put it on, tighten it, and that's it. What happens if, let's try this. If I just, so I'm not even sure what the closest focal distance is because none of the things actually seem to line up. One, two, three, five, there's infinity. Okay, so that's, all right, all right, that one makes sense. So let's go that way. That's closest focus. I am here, I can show you what I'm trying to do. Let me uh, plug the camera back in. I'm just moving it around, trying to find, even moving the lens away from the body and trying to, uh, from the sensor, changing that distance and trying to get an image to come into focus. As soon as this refreshes here, I will put it up on the screen. There we go. And you can see, so I'm just holding the lens in front of the sensor. Oops, go away. Not getting anything there either. Oh, 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 look, okay. There's something in focus. Here, I'll show you. Can you see if I go there? Yeah, I can't really see. It's like, I'm holding it like there to get that in focus. So could it be that the adapter is the wrong kind of adapter? But it doesn't make sense because this did work. I know this worked on Oh yeah, that is the right lens. That is the lens. This worked before. I did it. I took a picture. Different camera, but I did take a picture. All right, well, I am super bummed and at a complete and total loss. So I clearly have got to figure this out and let you guys know. Uh, let's see what else is coming. Um, Asamurai says, do you know when the new lens will be unveiled that you're teasing us with on Instagram? No, I don't. Sorry. Um, if I knew when it was being unveiled, then if there was a ship date, then it would be announced and it would be public. But there's no ship date 
Therefore, it's not public yet. Sorry. Um, but it's going to be awesome. It must be the adapter that's at fault. Uh, we already saw that. Do you need to switch the camera off while, using, while switching the lens over? No, absolutely not. Try taking the adapter out, set for infinity, and see what, the, what gap gives focus. At infinity. OK. All right, so let's go to infinity. Let's see, that would be this way. All right, and I'm not getting focus at all. Let's go a little bit less than infinity. Still wide open. No, I'm not getting anything. I don't want to like jam it in there and scratch the sensor. <laughs> That'd be bad. Um, well, that is very interesting and a bummer that it's not working. And like I said, it is crazy weird because this exact lens I did put on the other day, different body, it shouldn't make any difference, clearly, and it totally worked. Let me try it one more time. So I'm getting, now I'm getting, okay, hold on, that's in focus, wait a second. Well, look at how fogged it is, though. There's focus peaking. Haha, <laughs> hard at work. Stop down the aperture a bit. So get a little more depth of field. But it's super foggy, like there's a light leak. Huh, very strange. Very strange indeed. Well, I am bummed. Sorry about that, guys. I really thought this was going to be a much more interesting um, experiment than this. I really am obviously going to have to go spend some time figuring this out because I do love the idea. Make sure these aren't like telescoping lenses or anything that I'm missing. I really like this idea, but you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but it should work. And Trevor's got tons of these things. So um, clearly it works. Um, Trevor, do you have a, a particular adapter that you like and trust? Maybe, um, maybe I should be looking at a different adapter here. Okay, I just, I cannot get anything in focus. That's wild. Well, what a disappointment. I guess I guess that's it. So it's really cool to go out and buy them here. Let me show you the lenses that I was looking at. Let me show you on eBay because I got that brought up here. Um, and you can see what they cost because these are cheap. And that's kind of the fun part about it is these really are inexpensive. So this is the Industar 69 F2820. That's, oh, that's the one that hasn't come yet. Um, look, that was $35. Uh, this, the First one that came, the bigger ones, 50 F3.5, $35. Look at this, two 50 lens, the Zenit M39s. That's the two little ones, $18. I mean, bargain, right? This is super cheap stuff. Obviously, if it doesn't work, then it's not worth anything at all. <laughs> but there you go. Um, is there anything else in there? Uh, new Panalaika lens sometime this year. I hope so. Uh, oh, you've seen it. Okay, there you go. And um, can't wait for my review of that lens. Well, that will come when I can actually get one. These lenses are uncoated glass. Yeah, for sure. But I wouldn't expect to be quite that washed out. That was a bit. That was a bit crazy washed out. That was weird. And Trevor saying I tend to use micro uh, forty-two. I guess you mean M forty-three, probably micro four-thirds glass, which is standardized. There are different. Oh, M forty-two versus M thirty-nine. Okay, you're not talking micro four-thirds. You're talking. I see. Like mine, this one that I have is an M thirty-nine. So you're saying you tend to use. M42 glass, which is standardized. There are different M39 adapters with variations as to what lenses they will work with. Okay, interesting. Well, again, do me a favor. Uh, once this goes public, uh, once it's a, a recorded piece that's up there instead of the live one, because this, like I said, this chat will go away. If you could post in a little information just to help educate other people, that would be super awesome. I will pin that post to the top and then everybody can see whatever you have to share in there. And obviously feel free to promote yourself and, and so on in that post. Um, Interesting. Well, I'm bummed, but you know, you learn something every day. Although I'm not quite sure what I've learned yet, except that I clearly should prepare more. <laughs> Ryan's laughing in the other room. But that was always the fun of these things, just to go live and see what happens. Well, there you go. Not every show is a winner. Hey, thanks a lot for checking this out. Guess what? That um, that other GH5 video about the focusing system is done. It's uploaded. It's rendered. It's tagged. I'm going to publish that within just a few minutes after ending this. I just need to go in there and add a couple little keywords to it and um, and it is ready to go. I tried uploading it from two different airports and hotels and just couldn't get it up yesterday. I finally got it uploaded. I got home at midnight, hit upload and went noop, boop, and up it was. So we'll finish that up this morning and get that out to you right away. If you haven't seen the microphone test yet, check that out. Boom, microphone test, click that link. 
when you're not watching it live. And um, that that has been that came out really good. I think a lot of people are really excited about that. Getting some nice feedback on it. A couple of people telling me I did the microphone test wrong, but that's okay. Yeah, can't please everybody. Um, but yeah, check that out. And like I said, the GX GH5 focusing video will be up shortly. Hey, um, that's it. I'm going to knock it off there. Remember, thumbs up, thumbs down. I know, if you're going to thumbs down this video, I know it. Don't thumbs down this video. I know it was a crappy one. Give me, a, you know, give a guy a break. They can't all be winners. <laughs> but do subscribe if you're not subscribed. Uh, click on some of the links. They're going to fly on here once I'm done off the screen. And, uh, and that's it. Oh, more comments coming through. M42 is an adapter type. Okay, thank you, Trevor. Um, and uh, where's the video of the shooting skateboarder? Ah, yes, the skateboarder, snowboarder videos. I was editing those the whole flight home. I've got, I think, five separate videos. I need to shoot an intro to those, um, which I'm going to do this morning. And so hopefully within 24 hours or so, those will be up. Um, so what's today's Thursday already, isn't it? God, let's, let's say by the end of tomorrow, hopefully those guys will be up because I do want to get those to you ASAP. And um, Rafael saying you started following me a few days ago. Thank you. And so great. I did it since you make my GH5 decision to buy easier. Well, hey, super. And just for any of you who are shopping for the GH5, if you do decide to buy one, do me a favor. You know, in any description, it won't be in this one, but in any video description where I talk about the GH5, um, there's a link to it. There's an affiliate link. Buy it through there if you don't mind. It just, you know, it's either Amazon or B&H. Um, and I'm going to try and get Autorama on there as well for those who like to shop there. It just, you know, puts no, another nickel in the coffers here, which helps. Every little bit helps. Um... And slow-mo. Yep, don't worry. Slow-mo is done as well. I got that up there, Larks. We have the slow-mo in place. And uh, still fun to watch no matter the outcome. Thanks, Burns. I appreciate that. All right, guys. We're out of here. Take care of yourselves. Have a good rest of the day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. A little post-show update. I just took these outside and played with them again. This lens, the bigger one, I can get to focus. No problem. It's just its closest focusing distance is, I don't know, maybe five or six feet away. So that was the problem with this. There's nothing in here far enough away uh, I guess I didn't set it to the close focus and try and look at something far enough away. Uh, but this one works just fine. The little ones, however, I cannot get to focus at all. So it does make me think that what um, Trevor was saying about the adapter is the problem here. So these little ones were an M39. Um, well, this one, this one's an M39. Sorry, this one is an M39 as well. So a little bit of more research to do on that. And the on one that hasn't come yet, it doesn't say. So I guess we'll find out more, but um, I do have one that works. The little ones don't, so I got to see if there's a different adapter that I need for those. So there you go. Little uh, little post-show update for you. See you later. Bye-bye.